Let's move on to pulseless electrical activity in asystole. PEA and asystole are related cardiac rhythms in that they are both life-threatening and not shockable. Asystole is a flatline ECG. Always ensure a reading of asystole is not a user or technical error. PEA is one of many waveforms by ECG, but without a detectable pulse. PEA activity can include any pulseless waveform, with the exception of VF, VT, or asystole. Hypovolemia and hypoxia are the two most common reversible causes of PEA. If the patient has returned to spontaneous circulation, proceed to post-cardiac arrest care. Atropine is no longer recommended in these cases. Here are the rules for asystole. This is provided in your manual, and we encourage you to take this time to study this chart. Here are the reversible causes, which include the H's and the T's. This, like the rules, is also inside your manual. Although there is no evidence that atropine has a detrimental effect during bradycardia or a systolic cardiac arrest, routine use of atropine during PEA or systole has not been shown to have a therapeutic benefit. Here is the adult cardiac arrest algorithm. Please study this with your manual. Next we have CPR quality, an important chart to remember any time practicing proper ACLS. Shock energy is also a key component to ACLS. Next are the identifications for return of spontaneous circulation. Here is the section covering advanced airway. Drug therapy includes these doses and types. That concludes our lesson for pulseless electrical activity in asystole.